Hey guys, so this is what we're going to be making. Uh, this is what it actually looks like inside Unreal. And um, yeah, we can get started. So let's create a new level. So go up to the top left hand corner, click file and go to new level. Uh, and then in this case, let's just do empty level and click create. Um, also, you're going to want to go up and save the current level. Um, I'll do L uh, cavern two and click save. Uh, now, once you're in this blank level, we need to populate it. So go up to window, go to environment light mixer, and let's do create skylight. Uh, basically just click these all the way across. Perfect. Um, and the next thing we're going to want to do is go up to the top left hand corner, go to basic or shapes actually, and click plane. Uh, we're going to click R. So it's, um, changing the size and let's just make it uh, gigantic. And then we can bring this a little lower. And then just so we have a, a size reference, I'm also going to bring in Manny. Uh, so if you type in man, um, somewhere in here, you'll have Manny hanging out. Um, any of these will do. I'll just bring in this guy. Just so we have one little scale reference. And then I think I might, oh, not Manny. Um, I think I might make this even bigger. Um, size of the plane is really up to you. Uh, we're going to be building this out um, with the uh, beach cliffs. So we can um, really key it in then. So now what we want to do is go up to window um, and go into Quixel Bridge to get our first assets. Um, also, if you're someone who uh, gets really laggy when Quixel Bridge gets open, um, something that I've always found helps me is change it to unlit. So if you see me switch to unlit uh, throughout this tutorial, that's why. So if you go into the search bar uh, and you type in Beach Cliff, uh, these are what I'm using, these assets right here. Um, so I downloaded uh, most of these, um, I would say this one, this one, this one, uh, and then a few others really to switch up the texture. Um, and uh, you're ready to get started. Cool. So now that we're back in Unreal, I'm going to grab the beach cliffs. Uh, so if you go to Mega Scans and you click on Static Mesh, uh, by the way, the filters can be found in here. Uh, once you click the filter, they'll pop up. Uh, and these are the beach cliffs. So the first one I'm going to start using, I believe, is this one. Um, yes, they are small. We are going to make them large because they're going to be in the background and not the uh, main part of our scene. So they should keep a good amount of quality, as you can see. Turn it and then bring it back. Um, so if you notice these weird shadows here, uh, what you're going to want to do is click on the material. Um, type in two sided and click and click save. And now you're going to see that it is actually doing the appropriate shadow that you would expect. Um, I'm also going to change this to more of a midday look. just so I can kind of see everything more clearly. So when building this out, I'm going to be using the exact same piece again and again and again, um, which I understand is not the most uh, cinematic way of doing this. But what I like to do is kind of build out the scene first so I know how it's going to look. And then once I'm done building it out, I'm gonna add texture to the walls and switch things out um, to make it look a little better. Okay, um, so now that this is all done, again, we're just blocking the scene out, so this is not at all what we're going to have uh, end up with at the end. Uh, but what I do wanna do is actually bring in a camera so we can um, start building out appropriate to our 
uh, camera in our scene. So I'm going to go up here to uh, this little box, go down to cinematic and add an actor. Uh, and then you can right click it to pilot. And then let's change the overall look of the camera. So I'm going to make this a DSLR. It's going to be a lot wider view, which means we need these mountains to be bigger. And then I'm going to go down to you and make you 28. Uh, so this is the overall scene. I would say the distance from the camera looks pretty good, uh, but these uh, the beach cliffs need to be much larger. So let's uh, exit out and we can pin this right here. And then we can see how large we're going to want this so it looks more appropriate to our scene. I actually might want you to be slightly bigger. Perfect. So now I'm going to get rid of the rest and build out now with the uh, larger block. Okay, so this is now what it looks like. Um, again, the uh, these materials aren't um, reflecting the way you want it to. So go to material, go to two-sided and click. And then we are going to get uh, more realistic shadows. So I will say, since I'm not currently blocking out the scene like I usually do, I'm blocking it out with um, actual static meshes. Uh, do note that this is not what is going to be final. We're really just putting this in here to see and build out the scene, and then we will make final touches towards the end. Um, so now we can take this plane and center it more in the middle. Uh, and then I'm going to make a little more adjustments. Um, the main thing we we're going to want to do is actually bring in what is called a uh, rural Australia. Uh, that's where we're going to get our water. So let's go over to uh, Epic Marketplace and you're going to want to download this pack right here, rural Australia. Uh, it has a really good water uh, texture. It also has some good uh, tree assets um, that I am using some paid assets in this tutorial. So if you want to use some free assets instead, uh, this is a good option. Um, but it mainly has a really good water material, so you're going to need that for the water. Okay, so now that we're all Australia is uh, added to our project, uh, we can open it up, um, go over to water, and then let's just add the uh, material instance over to our um, plane. Now, you might notice that the further we get away, this light rim uh, is coming towards camera, and then as we get closer, the shadows will recede. Uh, this is not what we want because we don't want this to be occurring. Um, also, when I switch the light, this is going to look even more glaring. So we need to make some changes to this material to make it um, work a little better for our purposes. So what we're gonna wanna do is actually open the material um, and then we're gonna go down to lighting mode. And then in lighting mode, we're gonna change this to surface forward shading. Now, when we do this, there might be an issue that occurs. So when I click apply and save, uh, everything in the background, uh, if you can see on the little bottom left, it basically has disappeared. We no longer have our material. And the reason this is occurring is because, maybe it will show the error, um, the shader count is too high is basically what's occurring. Uh, so we have too many texture samples. It's not saying that, uh, which is actually kind of odd because it said it last time I did this. Um, but basically what we're going to want to do is group the textures. Um, so the texture count goes to less and then it will work for us. 
Um, so to do that, you're going to click on the texture and then you're going to go down to uh, sampler source and change this to wrap. And then just do this for every single texture you can find. Um, they will literally be called texture, which is going to help you kind of find. So just keep finding all of them and keep changing all of them to wrap. And then once you do that, when you click apply and save, the material will come back. And as you can see, I'm uh, going away from the water material and it's still keeping the correct shadows. So that is how you're going to fix the, um, the water material. Okay, so now that we've done the water, I am using the Japanese grave pack, Japanese forest grave pack to create uh, the island and, and a lot of the assets in here. Um, this is, however, a paid pack, but there are plenty of assets on Quixel Bridge that you can use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just quickly show you some of the assets that I think you could use as an alternative if you didn't want to buy the forest grave pack. So if you are someone who is going to be using the forest grave pack, and you're happy moving forward with it, uh, I'll have a marker in this video. Just skip over to that and, and you can get started on the tutorial following me along. But anyone who doesn't want to use paid assets, I'll be going through alternatives right now. So here uh, in locals where you would have everything downloaded. Um, so I have some golden pots from the forest grave pack and I was gonna say you can use this old wooden bucket. Um, there's also Japanese drums. Uh, if you go over here to home and go into assets and if you just type in Japanese, you're gonna get a lot of really cool assets you can use. Um, all this stuff is gonna help you build out uh, plenty of really cool islands. Um, so you can definitely do this tutorial free if you wish to. But here in local, I have uh, the Japanese gravestones because uh, I do use gravestones throughout mine. Uh, there is that little scene where I have a bunch of little dolls that are kind of like buried um, in this little grave. I was gonna say you could use this, uh, this Japanese antique cannon statue instead. You can add benches. The canoe that I use in the scene is actually a Quixel Bridge asset, so you can add that one in. Uh, there's different rocks. I would suggest these for the island, or you can create something a little more rocky if you wish, like this. Um, and then again, there's plenty of other assets. Uh, some of these I actually use in my uh, scene, especially the water lilies and these plants as well. Okay, so now, I'm gonna get started creating the island. So I have my camera set up and I know I want the island in the middle. And the cool thing about the Japanese grave set is their static mesh for the island that I'm gonna create is a complete 3D mesh. And what I mean by that is on all sides of this mesh is created. Um, most meshes will have, you know, like a blank background. Um, perfect example is these giant rocks right here. See how they're empty on the backside? Uh, so it's nice because this offers a lot of alternative when creating something because you can use every side of it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to bring this in the middle. Uh, you can hold shift while you're dragging it and your camera will follow. And then I'm gonna bring it down. And right now it's really just about copy pasting. And then I can kind of tune in how I want it to look later. So I made the basic shape of the island. Now that that's done, I'm gonna keep adding a few more details to make sure it looks the way I want it to look. And then I'll start cleaning it up and, and obviously blending all the uh, 
blocks and, and making it look clean. Cool, so now that we have the overall design of the island down, I'm going to be opening up Quixel Bridge. And I have uh, already some Japanese assets downloaded. Um, I would suggest using uh, the Japanese stone walls and any of these assets you see here, um, Nordic rocks. Uh, I do use this to kind of build out the scenes around the island. Um, I do use the lanterns and the gravestones, uh, the Japanese shrine stairs and the stone floor. Um, and then I do stone walls as well. Again, uh, these are what kind of lands on the front. You can also download this wooden boat uh, as well as the uh, Japanese park stone embarkment and the park stone steps. So um, go in and, and download some of these assets and these are what I'm gonna be using to move forward. So once it's all downloaded, if you go to mega scans and still have your static mesh selected, uh, all your static meshes will pop up. So let's start using these assets to build out our scene. And then uh, the main thing, which is going to help us uh, really bring out our scene is adding in our tree and then scaling it down because that is gigantic. So now let's keep building out our scene and uh, adding a, just a little more detail. Okay, so now that we kind of have the basics set up, uh, what we can do is go through and really add detail to the island. And then once we're done adding detail to the island, we can add detail to the scene around um, and then finally finish up with fixing up the uh, lighting. So uh, I will change the lighting just now real quick. Uh, this isn't gonna be finished lighting in any manner. I just kind of want a different look so I can see the scene a little better. Uh, and then I am going to decrease this to maybe about five, just because I find it to be incredibly bright. 
Um, also, it helps because lighting motivates a lot of things. It's nice to play around with the lighting to get an idea of what it's going to look like. Um, nice. I like that. Okay, cool. So now uh, let's just keep adding more details. Um, so a lot of this stuff I'm going to be adding is either from this pack or uh, Mega Scans. Um, so uh, yeah, we can get started. Um, I'm going to bring in these little Japanese statues to start and put it on the head of each area and then make them a little smaller. Sometimes I like to make things a few degrees off just to kind of make sure it doesn't look perfect because too perfect is kind of something everyone always notices. Um, and then I do know I have these guys scattered throughout the island.
Cool. So our island is pretty much done um, beyond the foliage. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fix this uh, just copy and paste background and make it look a little cleaner. And then after that, what we can do is try to add some foreground to the camera. And what I mean by that is really adding, um, I kind of like how this little cliff here uh, is showing and we want to add some ground stuff and then also add some foliage underneath as well as clearing out the bottom because right now you can't really tell but when I throw a, a bottom to this water uh, it's a translucent layer so you're basically just seeing out into the blue uh, and you don't really want that to be occurring so we'll fix that as well uh, so first things first um, let's make this canyon look a little more realistic So I'm going to go back into Mega Scans, and uh, I'm going to be going back to the beach cliffs. And the idea behind this is really just taking different textures of beach cliffs um, and using them to kind of break up what we already built. This actually might be the one we've been using. It is. Is it? It is not. Nice. So really, your eye notices repetition. So you want to break apart the repetition by using different pieces of each um, static mesh to kind of blend it all into one giant rock. Okay, cool. So now we have some texture to the background and to the water. Uh, we're going to actually copy this plane. Uh, I unfortunately made this below our landscape, so clicking on it is a little annoying. Um, but you're going to just click on it, copy, and then just drag that down a little. So now there's going to be two water materials uh, on top of each other. We're going to click on the bottom one, and we're going to go to our content. Uh, unclick everything so we can actually just see what's normal and we're going to right click and go over to material 
and we are going to name this uh, black or M underscore black unlit and it's literally going to be just that. So I'm going to click on this. We're going to go over here to the blend mode. Uh, actually, I apologize. So we're going to go to the shading model and change it to unlit. Uh, and that will literally just make it black. Save, apply. And now if I go down, are we already on the right one? It's a little confusing. We are on the right one. Okay. We're going to go down to plane two. Click here, plane two, and click this little arrow. And now the black is added. And now our ground is going to be completely covered and it's going to look realistic. Um, the other thing that this is also going to help us do is we are going to paint our underwater foliage to this bottom plane so it sticks out above this plane looking like the ground underneath is where it's growing from. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is I actually prefer the, the water foliage. So I already showed you some foliage you could download. Uh, again, just click on static mesh and mega scans. Um, and I am using Carolina water. Um, uh, I found this really good lotuses right here, the Rembrandt water lily. Um, I'm going to use these. And then I'm also going to be using these uh, bull brushes. So go on Quixel Bridge and download these and you're ready to get started. So once they're downloaded, we can go over to foliage and we can literally just drag and drop what we want. Um, I'm going to be doing a few of these um, here and there. Um, make sure Nanite is enabled on all of them. Um, you can right click, go up to Nanite and, and enable Nanite. Uh, it's just going to make your entire system run smoother. Um, I'm pretty sure you've done plenty of tutorials. If you haven't, Nanite is your friend. Add it to all your static meshes, um, including everything I've used here today. You can turn Nanite on um, and it'll save your computer tons of time. I'm not running on some amazing, you know, 4090 RTX. So Nanite is a, is a blessing. So once that's done, um, just teaching a little bit on about this. So you have brush size right here, which is how big the brush is and how small the brush is. You have paint density, which means if I click this once, see how much we just got right here. Uh, we're obviously not trying to paint that much, but just showing you. Um, you can change the paint density and the size. And then the erase density is also to help you out with erasing. Uh, if you shift click, it'll help erase. Uh, and then down here you have filters. So you can paint onto foliage. Um, you can paint onto translucent layers, which is gonna let us paint on the water, which is what we don't want. Uh, which is why it's unchecked. Um, I truly don't know what BSP means, <laughs> uh, but static meshes is static meshes and landscape. Um, and then if you actually click on each different foliage piece, you can change how much you want one to affect more than the others. For example, for this Rembrandt Lily, I can increase this to make the density of this specific piece of foliage more than the rest. Uh, I can also change the radius. You can also change the X and Y scaling. So um, if you say paint this again and again, I actually am going to want this to be 0.75 and 0.1, which basically means that it is going to randomly select a size between 0.75 and 1 uh, for this item, which means that there's going to be some variability between your foliage. So these are good to play around with. Um, a very uh, good one to remember is you can also change the max angle. Um, so the ground slope. So anything over 45 degrees, I'm not gonna be able to paint on. For example, if I went up to here to this wall, it's a static mesh, but nothing's being painted. Well, the pieces of it that are being painted are less than 45 degrees. Um, so that is a good thing to remember because if you're trying to paint on, say, a vertical wall, you're not going to be able to because of this. Uh, and nothing's broken. It's only because of this. Uh, so you can play around with that as well. Uh, for our purposes, this pretty much comes in the way we want it to. Uh, it's really just the brush size and paint density that we're going to want to change. Um, so, oh, and then the last one is you can uncheck whichever ones you don't want to be painting. So I can paint right now and I can uncheck these and keep painting. And it'll only paint uh, these six or these five and not these three. Um, also good to know. So for us, we are going to get started right away doing maybe a 50 brush size. Uh, let's do 25 brush size. Um, yep, that's perfect. And then a 0.38 seems okay for now. Let's see how that works.
So now that we're done painting, uh, I realize I made the mistake of uh, painting my foliage with the lilies. So I actually have lilies on my bottom layer. But um, if you want lilies, so in this scenario, the lilies are being painted on these meshes, which is how they're showing up uh, scattered across these rocks. But if you want lilies to pop up on your actual water, say over here, uh, instead of increasing the size, what you can do is uh, let's unclick landscape and BSP and let's click translucent. Uh, I'm going to make this 50 and then I kind of only want some gentle lilies. So 0.1, um, we can actually paint the lilies onto our water layer now that we have translucent. Um, so I'm going to actually go even less, maybe 0.02. I just want lilies every once in a while throughout the scene. Okay, so now we can get started on the foliage for the island. Um, I'm going to go back to selection, go to unlit, open up Quixel Bridge again. So I'm downloading some uh, yellow Archangel and wood sorrel. And then the other two I'm going to use are the um, Kikuyu grass and the uh, Nasterium as well as ferns. Um, so download whichever ones you think you like um, and we're ready to get started. Cool. So now that those are downloaded, bring up the content drawer, go into mega scans again, and you can go to static meshes. And then you just want to bring in the materials that you plan on using. So add your ferns in. Um, I'm going to add in you, you, and you. And then the sorrel can also go in. One more thick one, and then let's do a little bit of grass. Cool. So now that all those are added, we can paint depending on what we want. I do know that for this specific area, I want to do the smaller plants, so no grass, and just really focus on the sorrel. So this, or all these are clicked and no ferns. Cool. And then paint away. So now that that's done, we can bring in some other assets. Um, for this, I'm going to start off over here and really focus on the corners first and then start building into the main uh, island. So now that the foliage is done, we're gonna add a little more details to the ground. Um, so I'm gonna be using this little Japanese stone forest path um, and really just kind of like hiding it underneath so it looks like it's kind of been a little overgrown.
So perfect, uh, that is our island. Um, now we can make a little more changes to the lighting to try and key that in. So if we go over to lighting, um, going back to directional light, I actually kind of like how the light was set up in the very beginning. Um, and I will just let you know that I changed the intensity down to five. Um, now I'm gonna go over to height fog and play with the fog. Do we want more or less? The other thing we can also do is change it to volumetric fog. Um, and then kind of try and draw it back. You can also change the extinction scale um, depending on how much fog you want. You can also change the start distance as well. So you can kind of push the fog back. A few distance can go all the way up, but the start distance. So now the fog is pushed back to the background. Um, you can also change scattering distribution quite decently I kind of like this morning dew look um, and then with the sky atmosphere you can also change the sky atmosphere uh, the heights the ground radius um, but most importantly you can change Yeah, so play around with the fog here. Try and key it in to see what you like. Um, I'm going to try something new here. And bring the extinction scale a little lower. And then I kind of like this morning dew look a lot. So I'm going to keep it like this. And then one big thing that has always helped with uh, every project is always going to volumes and going into post-processing volume and adding a post-processing volume. And then when you go to the post-processing vo volume, uh, type in bounds in the search bar and then click unbound. This pretty much means it's going to affect the entire world. Uh, actually before gamma, let's do exposure and you want to change the max and min EV to the same number. So in this case, we're going to start off with five and see where this goes. So that's a little too much. Let's do one. Uh, maybe in between. So negative 2.5. Uh, negative two. Perfect. I like that one a lot. Um, and then this is pretty much going to keep the exposure even throughout the entire scene. So no matter where you're shooting, the exposure is not going to start jumping around the closer or further away you get from somewhere. Um, and then if you want some gamma, this is pretty much just a wholesale uh, contrast. Uh, so you can remove contrast from your scene or add contrast uh, depending on how you want it to look. Um, I'm actually probably going to do a 0.98. Just add a teeny bit of contrast to your scene. And then now we can start adding um, some Niagara effects to really bring out our scene. Um, so I like where we're at right now, but overall it is static. And other than the water moving, there's a lot more things you can add to try and draw out a scene. So from here on out, I'm going to be using Niagara particles as well as the fog material. So I will have links to the description below on um, how to make all of these. I've already created tutorials for every single one. So just check out the links if you want to bring out your scene and learn these particles. And um, you can come back here once you're ready to throw it all in and, and learn how it all works and, and how I use it to bring out my scene. So I have this fog material right here. Uh, and what I do with the fog material is I'm going to create a cylinder actually. Enlarge the cylinder and then make it very long and then enlarge it some more. And then I'm going to place it over our tree, angle it a little. And then if I add the instance to it, so right now you don't see too much, but if I open up the instance and try and key in the details, I can actually change the fog that is shining onto our scene. Now, right now you see, um, it's 2.5. Right now you can see the corners, but you can actually play around with the color intensity, the cloud size, and 
the Fresnel Min and Max to try and get like this cool effect of fog kind of shining out, almost as if light is hitting it. So now the other thing we can use this fog for is I'm going to make a gigantic plane again. I don't like that it inverts. I'm gonna make a gigantic plane again. So just keep going, keep making it huge. And then I can actually add the instance of fog to that as well. So now we have this giant layer of fog that is hanging out and I can change how that looks as well by increasing the color intensity. And just having this really cool subtle fog effect over our scene. There we go. So now we have fog kind of shining in both ways. Um, and then the last thing that I would suggest uh, you can add um, I am a big fan of easy fog since I started using it. Um, it is an absolute blast to use purchase this I believe it's like six dollars something like that and see how like all this fog back here That's all from this uh, right here um, And then all you have to do is throw in the blueprint and once the blueprints in Once the blueprints in you can click on the blueprint um, Let's delete that one since that one's not doing anything. You can click on the blueprint. You can change out the uh, texture to whatever you want. You want. Um, I actually am a big fan of this one. And then you can change the normal to that exact exact same texture as well. What is it called? T Mountain. T underscore M O U. And then they're pretty easy to see most of the time. Uh, this is one we're using right now. So you have the normal and you can even make it uh, move. So wind is one. So now it will move to the wind and you have really cool fog that you can play around with. It adds just that extra bit of texture to your scene. Um, and then the last bit is really just animating this one um, or shooting it. Uh, I already made a video on Basic Sequencer, which is going to teach you everything you need to know to basically create what I created. Um, however, I will go over this quickly. Uh, you can go up to this clapperboard and click Add Sequence um, and click Save. Once you have the sequence added, you can go over here to Track and you can enter to Actor Camera Sequencer and click Cine Camera Actor. And now it's added to your scene. And then all you have to do is pilot the camera, which it already forces you into pilot. And you can click transform. And then you can go to the end of your scene where you're going to be maybe looking up at it and click transform again. And then when you go back and click play, you're gonna slowly be moving forward. And this is how you make um, this Japanese grave uh, canyon. So once you have all your camera cuts set and you've designed the scene the way you want to shoot it, uh, the very last thing you can do is go into this clapperboard. Um, you're going to need Movie Render Queue enabled. To do that, you're going to go over to Edit, Plugins, type in Movie Render, and you can uh, click Movie Render Queue. It's going to ask you to restart, restart, come back to where you are right now. Click on the clapperboard and go to Unsave Configure. And you can configure this however you want. I already have a preset created. So I add .exr. Uh, I keep the deferred uh, rendering. I add anti-aliasing. For this particular project, I did six and six because 6,000 frames would take too long to render. However, if it's a short render, I would suggest uh, something like 16, 16 or 32 and 12. Uh, you can mix and match depending on what you're doing. Um, and then for console variables, I do have all these console, variable, console variables lined out. 
Uh, I will copy these and have these in the description as well. So you guys can use these to however you want to. And then finally for output, um, you can change it to be whatever resolution you wish. And then you can change the output location and the file name. Uh, and once all that's set, all you do is click accept and render local and you are ready to go. So hope you guys like this tutorial. Um, had a lot of fun making it for you. Um, I have a few more coming up later. So uh, make sure to like and subscribe and um, I'll catch you guys on the next one.